Hello everyone. Welcome to Illustrator. Today I will uh, explain the mean fourth estimation for buildings uh, using IS 875 Part 3 2016. So this is the part one of this series. I will be explaining uh, the whole process in different parts. So today I will begin with this simple structure where you can see uh, in this horizontal direction it is uh, 3 at the rate 5000 mm, that means we have 5 meter span, equal spans, and in the other direction we have 4 at the rate 7500, that means 7.5 meter equal spans we have. Right, and here we have the you can say elevation of the structure, and uh, the story height you can see, story height is 3 to double zero, that means 3.2 meter, and we have 10 stories here. Okay, so for this particular structure, we will be estimating the wind force as per IS 875 part 3. Now, before estimating or before calculating wind force for any building, we have to understand how the building is going to behave under this wind force or wind force. So, we can divide a structure or a building, I will, I will not say structure, I will say building, uh, into two different categories under wind load or wind so, if I just write the categories, the first one we can uh, uh, write it is rigid building. And then we have another type which is dynamically wind sensitive building. Okay, dynamically wind sensitive building. So we can divide a building into two different categories under the wind force or wind load. Okay. Now, first, before calculating the wind load for any any building, we have to understand which category our building is falling. Okay. So how to get uh, this category or how to understand which category our building is in? So for that, we will be referring IS 875. Uh, part 3 okay 2015 and if I just write the clause number it is clause number 9.1 okay so let's just open the code I have already opened here so you can see this is the uh, design loop other than that quick this is IS 875 part 3 2015 and I will go to 9.1 page number Uh, let me check. Eight. Yeah, here. So, uh, nine point one. Here you can see a dynamic effects. It is the nine, and we have a general note here. So, here in this particular, uh, you can say clause. If you go here in this particular area, you can easily see what is uh, written here. In general, the following guidelines may be used for examining the problems of wind-induced oscillations. Buildings and crew structures with a high to minimum lateral dimension ratio of more than 5. Okay, more than about 5. So, it says uh, the ratio of height and minimum lateral dimension. Okay, minimum dimension. And then we have another, uh, we can say, uh, point which is buildings and structures with natural frequency in the first mode is less than 1 hertz. In the first fundamental mode, uh, if the frequency is less than 1 hertz, in that case, any building or structure which satisfies either of the above criteria shall be examined for the dynamic effect of wind. Okay, so if your structure is falling under any of these criteria, any of these conditions, then you need to design or you can say you need to consider the wind force, uh, dynamic wind force and you need to consider the building as dynamically wind sensitive. If it is not falling under these two criteria, any of these two criteria or you can say both the criteria then we can call this as rigid building. Okay. So, uh, and you can also see here 
uh, that when it will be fighting out the first mode frequency, it is uh, sometimes very, uh, you can say, impossible to find out, or maybe you may not be having a proper uh, a rational method to find out the fundamental time period. If you do not have that, then in that case, you can use this formula uh, t equal to 0 0.1 multiplied by n, where n is number of stories. And this is in case of the moment resisting frame without any bracing or uh, any uh, shear work. Okay, and if you have any other structure where we have bracing for shear work, in that case, you can use this time period formula t equal to 0 0.09 h by under uh, root t. Okay, so as in our structure, we, do not, we are not considering any shear wall or any bracing for now. So, we can consider this method to find out the fundamental uh, time period or we can say uh, the, the first mode time period for the building. Okay, this is in case of you, if you do not have any rational method. Sometimes we do computer, uh, you can say computer uh, analysis and we find out the first mode frequency or first mode time period. Or you may hand calculate and find out the first mode, you can say time period, but it may take a lot of time. So, in that case, you can use this arbitrary formula to find out the fundamental time period for the structure. Okay. So, first of all, we need to begin from here. We need to check whether our structure is rigid or dynamically mixed. Okay. So, let me just uh, open this. Now, uh, many of you have asked me to create or to uh, show you how to create an Excel sheet for this. So, what I will do uh, to create this this particular thing, I will be using uh, Excel sheet. I will create an Excel sheet and I will be using very uh, basic formula there because I am not very uh, proficient in Excel sheet. So, I will just use very fundamental formulas to create the uh, total uh, calculation process and uh, you can always improvise it. And uh, it's my uh, very uh, request to all of you that please do not ask for the Excel sheet. I will be showing the total process to create that Excel sheet and I want every one of you to create the Excel sheet by your own. Uh, so that you can uh, learn and improvise the things, but uh, you can say in your own way. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, what we need to do, uh, we need to check first thing. The first criteria they say that we need to check height by lateral dimension, least lateral dimension. So uh, suppose we will consider this as x direction and this as y direction. So uh, we have length Lx, length Ly, total length of the building, and we have total height of the building. Okay. So in that case, first of all, we need to check Lx. This is the small lateral dimension, right? Sorry. So we need to check h by Lx. Right. If this is greater than five, then we will call it dynamically wind sensitive. Then the two criteria. If it is less than 5, then we will call it as rigid. Okay, even if it is equal to 5, then we can call it as rigid. Okay. So, this is the first criteria and second is we will be finding out, we will be finding out the time period which is 0 0.1 into n using this formula and then we will be finding out the frequency. Frequency is nothing but 1 by t. And if this is less than 1 hertz, if this is less than 1 hertz, then we can call it dynamically wind sensitive. If it is, uh, uh, sorry, let me just check if it is less than or greater than it says. So it says the building structure whole lateral frequency in the first mode is less than, okay, yeah, it is, saying, it is saying that less than. If it is less than 1 hertz, then you can call it as dynamically wind sensitive, otherwise it will be. Rigidly. Okay, so these two calculations we need to do first. So let's go uh, to our Excel sheet. We will start from here. So the first input we need is our LX, then we need LY, then we need H, right, and then we need number of stories N. You can write also number of stories like that. So number of stories N. And then we will be finding out the time period t, right? Okay. So uh, then we will do 
sorry time period i will let me let me do it later let me first do it uh, the h by lx right so we can do h by lx and then we can do time period then we can do frequency okay so these are the first input we need so what i will do i will make this as a box from here let me just zoom it a bit so that you can see it properly. So I will just color these cells. So these are the inputs that I need to put. So what is the LX for us? So if you just uh, uh, go here, LX we have three times five meter. Okay, so fifteen. We will write everything in meter. So it is fifteen meter. Ly we have four times seven point five meter. You can see here. So it is thirty meter, right? H we have ten times three point two meter, right? So it will be thirty two meter. Number of stories we have ten stories. Now this this thing is not an input, so I will just change the color. This is it will come automatically, right? So I will change this color, and uh, you can otherwise you can make it white also. That it will be uh, coming automatically. So it is uh, the formula for this is H by L X. So you can just write it here uh, equal to H by L X. Okay, so when you are doing it uh, like LX and LY, so in that case you need to remember that the least dimension you need to always put in LX direction, right? Otherwise you need to change this formula for other. Suppose you have your structure is uh, in this way. Suppose your structure is having this orientation like this. So in that case, this is your orientation. Uh, uh, least dimension will be L Y. You have to change the formula then. Okay. Otherwise, you can uh, improvise the Excel sheet. Like whichever is less from these two values, just to take from here. Okay. You can do that. Now I am just uh, doing from this for this particular uh, I can say problem. So it is H by L X. So I'll maybe I will format the cell and uh, the number of maybe I will take one. Okay. So it is two point one. Okay. So, what is our criteria? You can just make a uh, maybe if else program here. So, if this one is greater than 5, then we can, we can just write it. Then it is, you can say, wind sensitive. Otherwise, it will be rigid. Okay. Fine. Then I think, uh, okay, I have just in a wrong formula. So you need to keep the parenthesis here. Yeah. So here you can see it is showing rigid. You can create another if, uh, program here, uh, a command here. Like if it is equal to 5, then also it is rigid. You can consider, right? So uh, for now, you let's keep it like this only. And uh, the time period also we'll be finding out from our inputs here. So I will just make it white. So the time period we will end this frequency also. The time period is 0 0.1 into n. So 0 0.1. Let me just make it equal to 0 0.1 multiplied by this n. Enter. So the time period we are getting what frequency will be. 1 by 1 by time period okay and this will be in hertz time period will be in seconds okay so let's 
keep this thing in a different color. Okay. So for the frequency, so let's let's keep a formula here also equal to if this one is uh, less than one, then it is wind sensitive. Means dynamically wind sensitive. I'm just I'm just writing it's wind sensitive here. Sensitive or else rigid. Okay. So in both the cases, we are finding our structure as rigid. Maybe I will just take it put in this. Okay. So in both the cases, we are finding it rigid, right? So we can say that uh, now we'll be proceeding for finding out the wind force for our structure. Okay, so because the process for finding out the uh, wind force for dynamic, uh, maybe uh, dynamically wind sensitive structure and rigid structure is different. So that's why we need to uh, find out this one first. We need to decide whether our structure is dynamically wind sensitive or rigid. Okay, now let's get more to our uh, wind. Here now the first process, the first so the formula for finding out the wind force is F equal to C F force coefficient multiplied by A E, right? A e is nothing but the frontal area of the structure. Actually, it is A E Z that means frontal area at Z height, okay, at a particular height multiplied by P D Z design wind pressure at particular height. So this is the total formula using which we will be finding out the force. Okay, now to find out this, first of all we need to find out the PDZ. So the PDZ is equal to 0 0.6 PZ square. Okay, 0.6 PZ square. And to find out the VZ, see everything is connected, right? So to find out the Vz, no, sorry, I think I have done, uh, I have written this wrong thing here. Pdz will be Pz multiplied by Ka into Kd into Kc. Okay, this is my Pdz. Now to find out this Pz, we will be having formula 0 0.6 Vz squared. And then to find out the Vz, we will be having formula V, P into K1 into K2 into K3 into K4. So this is the whole process. So we need to go from the bottom. So this is the first process, second, third and fourth. Okay, so from, from the bottom we need to start. So first of all we need to find out these Vz actually. Okay. So these are the inputs B, B, K1, K2, K3 here. Okay, so let's go jump into our uh, Excel sheet and I will write the, you can say, inputs B, B, K1, K2. I will not write K2 because K2 is variable with height. Okay, uh, in, a, in a while you will see that the K2 value is variable with the height of the structure. So it may not be, it cannot be a, a constant value. So I will not, I'll not write the K2 here. I'll just write K3 and K4. Okay. VB is nothing but the basic wind speed for your particular area. And uh, K1 is risk coefficient. K3 is uh, our. Uh, K3. K3 is our topography factor and K4 is cyclonic uh, uh, it's a factor, cyclonic factor, right? So now you need to find out this VB from our code. So let's let's jump into our code. And here there are uh, different process or you can say different uh, you can say 
method to find out this pb first one is from the from the uh, diagram that is given here from the map you can see that it is in regions with its uh, basic mean speed so suppose we'll be finding out for uh, this zone kolkata okay uh, let me see yeah this zone is under two categories 50 and 47 okay you see this map of uh, west bengal so it is under two categories 50 and 47 and kolkata is falling under the category this one 50 meter per second okay so i'll just write vb as 50 and i'll write it as meter per second okay i'm finding it for kolkata so 50 meter per second then k1 now again jump into the food everything you need to just put from the code itself. So we have this K1 risk coefficients. So you can see different categories we have for all general buildings and structures for 50 years of design uh, return period. So we have uh, basic wind speeds and the, the value of uh, K1. So for 50 meter it is 1 for all general buildings. For temporary sheds and this kind of structures uh, it will be a less then we have the building and structures presenting low degree of hazard. Then we have these values. And then we have the important buildings, very important buildings. Okay, like hospitals, communication buildings, towers, power plant, etc. There, you need to use these formulas where the uh, design life of the structure we consider as 100 years. Okay, so now for us, we'll be considering for all general buildings for 50 year of design life. And uh, the value of K1 we are getting is 1. So I will write one here. Then K3 is the topography factor. Again, I will go back to my code. And uh, for this, here you can see there are a big explanation here about the K3. The effect of topography shall be significant at site when the upwind upwind slope theta is more than about 3 degree and below. And the value of K3 may be taken to be equal to 1. If it is 3 degree or less than that, then in that case, the value of K3 will be taken as 1. That means when you have flat terrain, in that case, we can consider this actually. Uh, then the, if the K3 value is uh, uh, more than 3 degree, then the value will be uh, in the range of 1 to 1.36. 1 okay, a method of evaluating K3 for values more than 1 is given in NXC. Okay, so let's go to NXC. Yeah, here. You can see NXC and uh, to find out the K3, here's the formula 1 plus C S0. Okay. So here you can see the uh, uh, diagram where the formula of, you can say, theta, uh, formula of L actually, we can find out from here. Uh, this is not required for us. Yeah. Here. So when you will be finding out the value of C there, uh, you need to find out this that by L also. If your theta is in between 3 degree to 17 degree and it is greater than 17 degree, then we can consider it as 0 0.36. So now how to consider this Z by L? If you see here, Z is nothing but the height of your crust where your structure will be happening. Okay, the test height from the average ground level. Okay, and L is nothing but the upwind uh, uh, length. That means from from where the slope has started to up to where uh, we have our crest, up to where the wind will be going up, then it will be going down, right? So the upwind length, the slope length, we will be finding from here. This is L actually. Okay, so for our our case, we'll be uh, considering we are not considering the structure in such slope, so we'll be considering as flat surface okay uh, flat topography so we can consider this value as uh, zero so our k3 actually if there is no need of taking this as zero because it is written in the code already if it is less than 3 degree then we can consider k3 as one right so we will consider k3 as one for post cyclonic importance uh, let me go to k4 which is in uh, page number 7 most probably. 
to see after K2 actually. Uh, yeah, here. Just see here. Uh, so the values of K4 structures of post cycloning importance for emergency services such as cyclone shelters, hospitals, schools, communication towers, etc. For this, we need to consider the K4 value as 1.3. For industrial structures, it is 1.15. For all other structures, it is 1. So we are considering our building as all other structure because it is a uh, maybe apartment building or residential building. So we can consider this as one value. So one. Okay, so we got VB, we got K1, K3, and K2. We need K2 now. Now you can see the K2 value is uh, varying from height to height. You can see this is table number 2, page number 8 of IC 75 uh, part 3. It is given that different terrain categories and different heights it vary. So, first of all, we have to decide which terrain category our building is for. So, here uh, if you go to page number 5, from here you will find the different terrain categories. First category is exposed open terrain with few or low obstruction. Of absolutely this kind of terrain we hardly have. Then we have open terrain with well scattered obstruction having heights generally between 1.5 meter or 10 meter. Uh, then we have category 3, terrain with numerous closely spaced obstructions uh, having size of building or structure up to 10 meter in height with or without few isolated tall structures and then we have the category 4 terrain with numerous large highly growth spaced uh, obstructions so uh, for our case uh, let us let us consider this open terrain with well scattered obstructions having height generally between 1.5 meter to 10 meter okay so let's consider this category so for this category you want to find out the K2 factors. So it is standard category 2. These are the values we have to consider. Okay. So let's take, uh, let's create one table here now. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay. So I will start from here. First, we will have the story. Okay. That's story number or story level. Let's write story actually as we go. Our story, yeah. First one. Then we have uh, floor story height. Okay. Then we have uh, story level. This total height. Okay. Then we need to find out K2. Okay, after K2, we need to find out VZ, right? So let's just take it like this. We can adjust these things later on. Okay, so we will start from story 1, then 2. So just up to 10. This one, my uh, this is my uh, tenth story, and uh, here at story height is three point two meter. We are considering so it is three point two meter for every story. Now story level for this one, it will be this one at the for second one, it will be. This one plus the next story height, and up, and then we can go on like this. Okay, now I have to put the K2 values. So uh, let me just format this cell up to maybe one value. Okay, so now you need to put the K2 values for these heights. So first we have 3.2 meter. If you if I just keep it like this. So now you can see here. Up 
to 10 meter it is uh, one actually for terrain category 2 so we will put one here then one here then one here then we have 12.8 meters right but here we do not have 12.8 meter we have 15 meter so we need to do uh, linear interpolation you can see for intermediate values of 5 z in the given terrain category use inter linear interpolation so let's make a uh, sheet here or make a formula uh, formula here for the interpolation suppose x1 then x sorry x and x2 And then we have y1, y, and y. So all this, everything you can put in your uh, Excel sheet so that uh, while doing the calculation, it will be easy for you to find out everything. Okay. So let me just take a box out of this. So these will be my inputs will be an input will be an input. here I will be finding out the the value that I want so what is the formula for uh, linear interpolation or how to do the linear interpolation let me let me open the pen here so that I can write So the method of linear interpolation was y equal to y1 plus what it was uh, it was x minus x1 you can see x minus x1 okay multiplied by y2 minus y1 multiplied by x2 minus x1 so this was my formula which I will be putting here okay so first this y1 plus x minus x1 y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 okay very simple so we can do that let's keep it here in the formula we can write it here equal to y plus so we have y1 plus let's give a bracket then again give a bracket x minus x1 so x minus x1 bracket closed multiplied by again bracket start y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 okay bracket close here divided by x2 minus x1 so again bracket start x2 minus x1 bracket close and close and okay now you can put the value here so for us first we need to find out for 12.8 meters so for 10 meter is 1 for 12.8 we do not know for x2 is uh, 15 for 15 meter it is uh, 1.05 1.05 if this enter so you can see 1.028 so here it will be 1.028 uh, enter next we have 16 meter do we have 16 meter so we have 15 and 20 so for 15 20 and here it is 16 for 15 meter the value is 1.05 for 20 meter the value is 1.07 so 1.054 right 1.054 next we have uh, 19 point do we have 19 no we have 20 so we can put it here just 19 point two so 
next 22.4 so we have 20 and 30 so 20 30 22.4 for 20 the value is 1.07 1.07 for 30 it is 1.12 1.12 so here it is 1.08 it here 1.08 okay we got the k2 here then we have 25.6 same here just i have to put here 25.6 is 1.098 so 1.098 then 28.8 uh, same here 28.8 1.114, 1.114, and then we have 32. So we have 30 and 50. So we have to change this 30 and 50, and it is 32. Okay. For 30, the value is 1.12, 1.12. For 50, it is 1.17, 1.17. So we got 1.15, 1.15. Okay, so we got uh, the K2 values for different files. Okay, I hope it is clear to you what I have done here. So I have just done uh, the linear interpolation between these values and find the found out the K2 values. Okay, now it is very easy to find out the VZ value, VZ equal to. These values will be constant here, VB. So you can put this symbol here to make it constant okay db multiplied by a1 again you can put this symbol here okay k1 multiplied by k2 it will not be same it will be variable so i will not put this symbol here multiplied by k3 again it will be constant so I will put this symbol here multiplied by k4. It's also constant. Press enter. So you got the value here. Now you can just copy this. And you can see here uh, that here only the this this value is changing the other values are constant here right okay so this is enough okay these things are also input then this color right fine these things are also input then put this color let me just make a box here so we got k2 we got b there now what we need to find out now what we need to find out we need to find out the pz value right we need to find out the pz value so what was the pz value pz what is pz actually this is the wing pressure that we need to find out at story every story level so the pz is equal to 0 0.6 0 0.6 multiplied by Vz square. So you can just write maybe twice or you can give this to actor. Okay. So we we are getting this P uh, Z in Newton per mm square, right? We are getting this in Newton per mm square or what? Let us check. Yeah, yes. Uh, here you can see pz square 0 0.6 pz square in sorry newton per meter square not mm newton per meter square now we need to convert this into kilonewton per meter square because we will be finding out the force in kilonewton so we need to change this as uh, kilonewton per meter square so for that we need to divide this using uh, by 1000 so maybe i will just give a bracket here and divide it by 1000 so it is in now kilonewton per meter square. It's easy. 
okay this is in kilonewton per meter square fine uh, now what we need to do here just drag it so that we can find out for all the all the things so let's format this cell and let's take two numbers okay so we got the pz values i'll make a box here okay now what we need after this we need pdz for p or pd right pd for every single story level so pd is that equal to design wind pressure you can see this pd so the design wind pressure depends on the kd k and kc and then we will be multiplying it with the pz value okay so kd k and kc will be our inputs here okay so what i will do maybe i will write it here kd k and kc so let's write k first is k a d okay k d then we will have k c why i am not writing k a because again this k a is variable with uh, uh, with the different direction so, okay this k a is variable with different direction so uh, i am not writing here maybe you can write it here k a x and k a y here k a y is possible here yeah. okay for x and y direction it may be variable based on the dimensions of the building this is my inputs that we need to put here okay because this is the formula you can see p d equal to k d into k into k c into p z right p z we got we need to find out the k d k c and k a k a for its two directions so let's find out the k d so here kd what is the kd it is the wind directionality factor actually uh, when wind flow flows there will be some randomness in the wind right so it may not be in in a certain direction in a particular direction so when we are assigning the wind in the structure we are assigning for a particular direction like x or y but in the real case it is not like that so that's why you need to consider this factor kd with uh, our design wind pressure uh, so that uh, this consideration can be like uh, this conservative way we are approaching so it can be uh, you can say justified so considering the randomness in the directionality of wind recognize the fact that the pressure of force coefficient are determined for specific wind directions it is specified that for building solid signs open signs let its framework thus towers a factor of 0.9 may be issued on the design wind pressure for circular or near circular forms this factor may be uh, taken as one for cyclonic affected regions also factor are uh, considered uh, kd is equal to one so if it is cyclone effective areas uh, cyclonic affected areas so we can consider it as one as by default otherwise for normal buildings okay you can consider it as 0.9 and for circular or near circular buildings you can consider it as one so uh, as i mean kolkata i will consider this as cyclonic region only because there are we have witnessed a uh, few you can say uh, major cyclones here right uh, last year also so i will be considering as one of the so kd is one here then we have kc so the kc value is in page number 16 let me go to page number 16 Here it says uh, here you can see seven point three point three point one three. So it says when taking wind loads on frames of clad buildings, it is reasonable to assume that the pressure or suction inside and outside the structure shall not be fully correlated. Therefore, when taking the combination effect of wind loads on the frame, a reduction factor Kc of zero point nine may be used over the buildings. envelope when roof is subjected to pressure and internal pressure is suction or vice versa now it is all about when you are using uh, the pressure coefficient method the internal pressure external pressure coefficient cpe cpi or as you using right 
So here in our method, we are not going to consider the CPE and CPI that formula. We are considering the CF. Okay. So when you are using the fourth coefficient, then in that case, this value of AC should be considered as one by default. So do not consider 0 0.9. Let's make it one. Okay. Now we need to find out KAX and KA1. So why these two values are uh, we can differentiate these values because uh, if I go to KA uh, page number 10, table number 4, okay. So if I go to page number 10 here, you can see the wind directionality factor or area averaging, sorry, this area averaging factor KA. This is based on the tributary area uh, of your uh, every, every flow, okay. So what you need to do, maybe in your, in your case, the tributary area may be differentiate uh, it may be different for float to float, but you need to consider one average value. So here, the tributary area, uh, what will the tributary area for our flows? So if I just go to my uh, whiteboard, tributary area is nothing but suppose I want to, I want to find out the tributary area for this flow, for this flow. So it will be, uh, Half of the above flow and half of the bottom flow. This is my tributary. This is my tributary area for this particular flow. For the top flow, it will be only half of the bottom flow because we do not have any flow at the top. Right? Now, in our case, we have all the story levels as 3.2. So, even if we make it uh, half of this and half of the lower one, the total height will be here, the total height will be 3.2 meter. Right. So, what will the tributary area then? The tributary area, suppose this is for which direction? This is for which direction? So, when you will be finding out KAX, let me just write it here. Remember, the force is coming. Suppose the x direction force is coming from here, and it is, it will be applied or it will be effective on the y piece. And when the force is coming from, this wind is coming from y direction, then it will be effective on x piece. So when you will be finding out KAX, it will be your tributary area multiplied by, if you find for x direction, it will be LX, sorry, LY. And when you will be finding uh, KAY, it will be tributary area or uh, frontal area multiplied by LX. Okay, so let us just do it here. So we can directly consider the height multiplied by uh, LX and LY. So for this particular case, so KAX will be. So, Kx will be uh, height 3.2. Let me just write from here. Okay, story height 1, 1 uh, I will take. So, equal to this one. I will always uh, make it constant. Sorry. Or maybe you, you can write a story height. Uh, average story height somewhere a uh, different place also. Yeah, let me do that. That will be better. Okay. Let me let me write a average story height somewhere here. Average story story height. Okay, so average story height, I will write 3.2 meters. Okay, fine, so you can write Kx equal to average story height multiplied by Ly 
and uh, a y equal to average story height multiplied by l x okay so this is my value of uh, you can say k a x and k a y no actually we are not finding out k a x and k y sorry 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 uh, no we need to find out this one let me just delete this i will write uh, frontal area along y direction and frontal area for x direction okay i'm writing with this so this will be my is equal to yeah because this kx and ky value we need to find out from this table not from the formula right so this area will be story height multiplied by l y and uh, it will be story height multiplied by lx yes so we got this values now fine uh, let me just make it like this okay and it will be in meter square okay it will be in meter square so now this k a x and k a y values okay based on this a y and a x you will be finding out the k x and k y you can always uh, take a screenshot of this uh, codal provision and you can put it beside this, this particular formula or this place so that you can refer from always refer from here now here this k x and k a y value first we need to see what is the frontal area or average uh, story area for this uh, along the y direction okay this area is for every story okay every story uh, uh, you can say every level so it is 96 meters square now it says if if the tributary area is less than 10 or equal to 10 meters square then the k value will be 1 if it is between 10 to 20, uh, if it is 25, then 0 0.9. If it is greater than or equal to 100, then uh, 0 0.8. So our value, first value we have got is 96. So let's put it here in this, uh, you can see interpolation uh, area. So we can put 25, then we have 96, and then we have 100. For 25, it is 0 0.9. For 100 it is 0 0.8 okay so uh, for 96 also we can consider as 0 0.8 only right 0 0.805 it says so let's let's write it here as uh, 0 0.81 maybe. yeah okay or let's write it 0, 0 0.805 and ky will be you can see uh, it is 48 so same i just need to change it to 48 so 0 0.869 0 0.869 okay so we got these two values k a x and k a y from our table number 4 this is the input they need to put okay now let's let's find out our pdz Okay, PDZ will be how much will be PDZ? PDZ will be KA into multiplied uh, equal to so PDZ will be different for different directions, right? It will be different for X direction, it will be different for Y direction. So I will just write PDZ for X direction equal to k a x this will be my fixed value so i'll just give this symbol here okay 
multiplied by KD, KA, KC, KD, right? So KD, this is also a constant value. Means the cell will not be changing, right? So that's why we are making it constant here. This cell will be always fixed. So multiplied by we have done KA, KD, and KC. Okay, this is also fixed. Multiplied by my PZ value. Okay, so you can write PZ. And so always you can make it maybe two format cells, number two. Okay. Fine, and you can drag it like this. You can see here, this 3 will be fixed and only the PZ value is changed. Right, similarly for PD, uh, Z for Y direction. So I'll just, let me write for X direction force. Okay. And it will be P, E, Z for Y direction. This y direction force. Okay. Again, it will be equal to KA. Now, for this KAY, it will be fixed. Multiplied by, sorry. Multiplied by KD. It is also, sorry. Uh, K and D. This is also fixed. Multiplied by K C. Okay, it is fixed, and then multiplied by my P Z. So I can, you can write it here P Z. Okay. And Again, you can drag this and you can format the cells. Fine. So we got PDZ for A direction, PDZ for Y direction. Right. So now what we need to find? Now we need to find the frontal area which we have got previously also. Now we need to find the frontal area for every story. So uh, uh, for X direction, like uh, we can write a a e z for x direction then a e z for y direction right because the frontal area now again the same concept actually frontal area if you see this is this one half of the above and half of the bottom Okay, and multiplied by the uh, total length. Okay, so frontal area for every story you can find now for x direction. If it is x direction force, the frontal area we will find for the y, di y direction, this one. And for y direction force, the frontal area will be perpendicular to this, that means the x direction. So here the frontal area will be this. Let me make it a box. This AE along X direction means for X direction force it will be how much equal to I will give bracket this one divided by 2 right this one divided by 2 plus the above 1 divided by 2 bracket close multiplied by as it is for x direction force so we will be multiplying lx uh, sorry ly so ly now this ly will be fixed so i'll just fix it like this enter okay so you can just move it like this and you can see for the last one, as we do not have any uh, floor above, so it will be half of the uh, below one. Okay. 
and similarly for y so equal to same bracket this one divided by 2 plus this one divided by 2 bracket close multiplied by now as we are finding for a uh, y direction force so it will be uh, l it will be suppose y direction right so it will be l x enter let me just make it fix okay and drag it like this okay fine so uh, frontal area we can actually uh, make it in a different way because it may be confusing if we write uh, a z x and if we uh, find out the area for y direction so what we can do maybe frontal area for x direction right so let me just change it uh, frontal area for x direction let's keep it x only so it is c4 okay we will make it c4 fine and we can drag it like this and we will make this one as c5 and we are drag it like this so what we i have done the area i have kept c so i am just fine like this Okay, when I am saying AE X direction, so I am finding out the area for this direction. Okay, this is my X direction. When I am writing AE Y, so I am finding area for this direction. Frontal area along Y direction, frontal area for along y, uh, X direction. Then I am, when I will be finding out the force, and I will be F equal to CF multiplied by a e z multiplied by p e z there what i will do when i will be finding f x then i will write c f x multiplied by a e z y okay multiplied by p e z so this will be my uh, actual process okay so now what we need to find out we need to find out the c f cfx and cfy okay two more uh, inputs we need to find out cfx and cfy so we can write somewhere maybe here cfx equal to and cfy equal to okay let me make it a box This will be my inputs. Okay, CFX and CFY. Now, to find out the CFX and CFY, if I just go to the code, you will see that this CFX and CFY will be finding out from the uh, graphs given in uh, page number 35 of ISA 75 part 3. Let me just go to page number 35. Yeah, here you can see for flat buildings uh, of uniform section, the overall force coefficient for rectangular flat buildings of uniform section and flat groups in uniform flow shall be given in uh, figure number four. And for other flat buildings of uniform section without projections except where otherwise shown, shall be given as in table number twenty-five. Okay, so now for for finding out the CF of uh, a buildings with uniform section in that case we will be using these two formulas uh, sorry these two graphs so where we need to find out a by b and h by b two things okay the, the total thing depends on the a by b and h by b this graph or uh, this uh, you can say uh, parameters are based on h by b and here this uh, direction we have a by b 
based on this two we will be finding out the cf okay so basically what we need to do basically you can see here uh, let me just explain suppose this is x direction and this is y direction so when we will be finding out the cf for fx means the x direction wind force in that case the phase where the wind will be striking this is my b okay and the side faces will be a right so then we will find a by b and h by b will be height divided by the phase where the wind will be hitting right so h by b. fine now suppose the wind is coming from this direction wind is coming from this direction so what we need to do again we need to interchange actually this a will come here so this will be a and this b will become the going here this will be okay so just let me just give you one example so suppose this is my lx this is my ly and i will be finding out for cfx so what we need to do we need to do a by b right so this a by b will be lx by ly and h by b will be h by ly and if I want to find out for CFY, okay, for Y direction force, in that case, A by B will be, means my A will be interchanged. So, A by B will be LY by LX and H by B will be H by LY. I hope it is clear. Then you have to find out for which graph it is falling. Now, to make this job very easy, uh, what I have, uh, what I will share with you, one table where all the h by b and a by b is so if you just uh, go to this here graph you can see this first graph is used when the h by b value is greater than or equal to 1 in case of the h by b value less than 1 in that case you need to use this graph now finding out the values from this graph is very tedious actually and maybe it may not be that much perfect so what you can do uh, you can use the different reference books. I have taken a screenshot of a uh, book of uh, Pilla and Menon, RCC designed by Pilla and Menon, and the CF values for different A by B and H by B are given here. Okay, so what you need to do, you need to just have to find out what is the A by B for two directions and what is the H by B for two directions. Okay, and then you need to find out the uh, you can say value of CF from here. Okay, so let me just go back to my Excel sheet and I need my A by B. Let me just write for X direction force. Okay, A by B equal to and h by b equal now you can write for y direction force a by b equal to and h by b equal to okay so these are the Input we need to find out the CFX and CF1. So now our building is like this. You see our structure is like this. Okay. When wind is coming from this direction, FX, this is A, this is B. Okay. So what is our A value? This is 15 meter. What is our B value? It is 30 meter. So this is my LX, this is my LY. So A by B will be LX by LY. So you can just write A by B equal to LX divided by LY. And H by B will be total height equal to height divided by LY. Enter. Right, so let me just format this cell number maybe up to two. Okay, and now for y direction force, 
So let me just uh, erase this. Now for y direction force, the force is coming from y direction, F y. This is my B and this is my K. This B is again LX, this K is again LY. Right. So now the A value A by B will be LY by LX. So just write it here equal to LY by LX and H by B will be H by LX. So H sorry let me write it here equal to H divided by this LX. So we got this values. Let's format the cell up to two decimal places. Okay. And we do not have to input this, it will be calculated automatically. This is how we have programmed here in the Excel. Right. You can do like what I'm saying, I'm I'm doing it in very basic manner. You can always improvise it as per you. Uh, I do not have that much speed in Excel. Okay. So what you can do, you can always improvise it uh, in your own way. Fine. So now from these values, from these values, we need to decide what is our CFX and CFY value. Okay. So for CFX, we need A by B is equal to 0 0.5, H by B equal to 0, uh, 1.07. Okay. So let's go to this image here. What you will see that we have the value of a by b 0 0.5 here so now h by b value will be used this this value now the problem here is we have h by b as 1 and 3 and our value we have got 1.07 right we have got 1.07 yeah so what we need to do again we need to do linear interpolation so for h by b 1.07 what is the value so for 1 this is the value for uh, 1.07 question mark for 3 this is the value okay so let me just write it here x1 equal to 1 x x equal to uh, 1.07 x2 equal to 1.261 okay again y1 equal to uh, 1 point sorry uh, I have read a little wrong character let me just write it properly see for this and this in between we have 1.07 okay and for this one so these two values okay so I will write it here x1 equal to 1 x2 equal to 1.07 x sorry x equal to and x2 equal to uh, 3 y1 equal to 1.261 y1 okay, y equal to you do not know y2 equal to 1.352 okay so this value will be using let me just remove this so that I can write from here. Okay. So this value that I am putting here x1 equal to 1, x equal to 1.07, and x2 equal to 3. Right y1 equal to 1.261 y2 equal to 1.352 1.352 so we got 1.264 okay cfx it is 1.264 okay we got cfx similarly we need to find out the cfy so for that a by b is 2 and h by b is 2.1 Similarly, we need to find out p by b is 2. Then go here. And we have this. p 
a by b two we have here. H by b is um, two point one two. H by b is two point one. We have this. Uh, we have one and three. So again, in between these two. So here and here. Okay. So x one equal to one. X equal to two point one something. That was one point one three, I guess. And x two equal to three. Y one equal to one point double zero six. Y equal to not no. Y two equal to one point zero nine seven. Fine. So let's put these values now. Let me just edit this. One, this will change to two point one three. Okay, one point will be one point double zero six, and it will be uh, one point zero nine seven. One point zero nine seven. Okay, so we have got a value of one point zero five seven. One point zero five seven. Okay, so we got C F X and C F Y. Now the question is, what if the value of A by B are also not available here? Like suppose in between some one value in between zero point two five and zero point five. So what will happen? In that case, you need to do double interpolation. So uh, the double interpolation, if you do, will be something like this. So suppose we have uh, a one and a two, and then we have a here. This is the uh, h by b suppose. Okay, h by b, h by b, and this one. This is the value that we have got. Okay, this is not available in the uh, in the uh, table, and then we have b one. So let me just write it in a different way. It will be this will be B one uh, B and B two. Okay, it's by B values, and then we have A by B values. So we have A one, A and A two. Now the value for A one and B one is suppose. C one comma one. The value for A one and B two is C one comma two. The value for A two and B one is C two comma one. The value for A two and B two is C two comma two. Right now, what which value we need? We need a value for this. And for this, these are the unknowns that we have got. These are the values that we have got from our calculation. Okay, so what will happen here? So we need a value somewhere here. This is my C. Okay, this is also unknown. This is also unknown. We have found out these values from our A by B and H by B. Okay, these are not available in the uh, as a table. Now, after finding out this a, by a and b, now this c is unknown, which is not available in the table. Previously, only one was uh, not available. Now, both the uh, sides which is not available. Okay, a by b also not available. We found out the h by b also not available. Found out. Now, how to do the interpolation here? We need to do double interpolation. So, the formula for double interpolation is c equal to And write it here. C equal to b two minus b by b two minus b one. Okay, multiplied by c one comma one. Okay, plus b minus b one by B two minus B one 
मल्टीप्लाइड बाय C1 को मान ओके दिस मल्टीप्लाइड बाय दिस मल्टीप्लाइड बाय A2 माइनस A बाय A2 माइनस A1 ओके इस इस होल वी हैव गोट इस इस होल वी हैव गोट प्लस Again, there will be plus bracket. We will have B two minus B one by B two minus sorry B two minus B or B one multiplied by B two minus B one so divided by multiplied by C two comma one. Okay, C two comma one. Same thing. Now we are multiplying C two comma one plus B minus B one as previous one. Okay. Then B two minus B one multiplied by C two comma two. Okay. See. Let me just correct the bracket. I think I have written. This will be the second bracket, and here will be another second. Okay. Then again, here will be one second bracket. Here will be another second bracket, and here it will be multiplied. The whole thing will be multiplied by a minus a one by a two minus a one. Then we will solve this. Okay. So that means this particular thing is a whole. And uh, the this whole thing will be multiplied with this. And again, this thing is a whole. And from here to here will be multiplied with this. Okay. So actually, I have written this formula in my notebook so that I can get here and I can tell you. So just remember, these are the values available in the table. Okay, these are the values available in the table. And this is the value we need to find out. These are the values which are which we have got from our calculated a by b and h by b. Okay, if both are unavailable, which both are unknown and we have found out, then in that case, finding out the c, we need to do this double interpolation. For now, in our structure, we have got only this b, which is not available in the uh, table, so we have easily find out using the normal linear interpolation. Okay. So you can use this formula. You can write always, and what you can do, just take a screenshot of this table also. Uh, if you have this the book of Billy Miller, the uh, Boras instructor, is that you can always refer there. Okay, so you can take a screenshot of this table so that you can uh, refer in your calculation. Otherwise, always you can take the code, help of code, and find out these values from the graphs. Okay, which is a bit tedious, so I am using this table. Okay, so. What we have done, we have found out the C F X and C F Y. Now we can easily do the F X and F Y. So force, wind force along x direction will be. Uh, let me just box. Okay, F X equal to C F X. Okay, this is the constant value. So I will just. This symbol here so that it can be constant. Okay, multiplied by frontal area we need. So frontal area of y face, right? As we are finding out the f(x) force, so it will be frontal area of y face. So this one multiplied by what we need? We need the p(dx). Right, C F into A P D Z. That is what our formula is. So we will be multiplying this one. Just enter, and you have got this. And this is in kilonewton. So you can just drag it and find the formula. So it is in kilonewton. Okay. So write in the bracket. It is in kilonewton. Oops. Similarly, you can find out for f y. 
तीन किलोमीटर to find out the same for same now we need to multiply cf and cf y equal to cf y this will be constant value multiplied by area frontal area now frontal area as we are as we are finding out uh, the y direction push so the frontal area will be of uh, along y direction x direction Okay, perpendicular to the uh, force. So, x direction area multiplied by by P D Z for y direction. Enter, and now you can drag this. Let me find out for all the force. Okay, so here you can see the C A value is constant. These values are changing without the given area. So now this is you can again make it like this maybe so these are the outputs we need okay these are the outputs we need and this focus will be applying to your structure different structure okay this process will be applying to your structure different so let me just show you how it will be. It will be like this. It will be something like this. Uh, here. So, you will be applying the force like this. First, how much we got? Suppose I am applying the force from x direction. So, Fx for top load. This is 192.72. Uh, then, the next flow is 181.84. Okay, and the next direction will be 176 point something the next the next flow it will be 171 next flow like this it will be applying the force to the structure okay so this is how you can calculate this is how you can calculate the wind force for a rigid type of building a rigid in terms of uh, you can say uh, uh, behavior under wind load Okay, as per IS875 part 3. Okay, so let me just write it here. This is win force calculation as per IS875. Part three thousand. Okay. So this is how you can make a beautiful Excel sheet. Now you can improvise so many things. You can automate so many things. Okay, I have taken so many values from the uh, from manually from different places. So you can uh, automate those uh, those values also. Maybe you can create the whole uh, this table in your Excel sheet itself and you can connect with the other cells. Okay, this improvisation you can do. I am not that much proficient in Excel, I am telling you again. So, uh, I, am, I have given just a simple or I can say basic uh, idea how you can create an Excel sheet to find out the, you can say, uh, wind force uh, for, for, for buildings as per well, ISSN. Okay, so this is it for uh, this video. I hope you guys will like this and you guys will. Uh, those who are not having idea about finding out the wind force or those who are, who are having the doubts regarding this. So, it will be clear from this video, I hope. And if you have any other doubt, you can always write in the comment box or in the chat so that I can 
see and I can uh, try to solve your doubts. In our next video, we will talk about the dynamic uh, wind sensitive structures and we will calculate the dynamic wind. So in that case, the only difference will be, uh, if you see, formulas we have written, it was F equal to CF multiplied by AEZ multiplied by PDZ, right? Now in the next, uh, in case of dynamic wind, uh, wind sensitive uh, structures, so you need to multiply this PD, uh, PDZ bar. So it will not be only wind, uh, design wind pressure, it will be design hourly mean wind pressure multiplied by gust factor. So one more factor will be multiplied, which is the gust factor. Okay, so now while finding out this PDZ, one thing that will be changed is K2. Now there will be no K2, it will be K2, K2 bar and this will be fine, uh, we will find out using a different formula, not from the table number 2. Okay, we will be finding out this uh, K2 from different formula. So this K2, uh, which we have find out the uh, I think, uh, height factor, right. Uh, so in that case, it will be different and again this Bz that we have found out, again it will be changed to Bz bar, it is by the hourly design wind speed, hourly mean design wind speed, okay. So these things will be changed in case of the dynamic uh, effect. So that I will be explaining in our next uh, video. Thank you for watching. And again, if you have any doubt, you can always write in the comment or you can, uh, uh, those who are connected with me through social media, you can always uh, text me so that I can help you out. Thank you and see you in the next video.